Hello subscribers, and for those of you that aren't subscribers, please subscribe, and if you enjoy my videos, please like and share them. The other day I was contacted by a subscriber from Australia. He was interested in sending me some of this, um, this oak called Hairy Oak, and I got home the other day and there was a piece of this Hairy Oak in the mail. I don't know if you can see from there, but it has extremely interesting grain patterns. There are some pretty good sized checks and some pith. Uh, some of these checks run way up in here. So I think what I'm going to try to do with this piece is I'm going to try to cut this little end off right here where there's a crack running into the pith and then come over about that far, cut a chunk out and try to turn that into a small uh, lidded canister. So that's what I'm going to be trying to do with this piece. Thank you very much Les. Uh, this was sent from Australia by a gentleman by the name of Les and uh, let me just say this. I was um, I was very excited to receive this piece and then in looking at it it looks like it's going to have some very very interesting grain uh, if I can get this piece to stay together. Like I said, there are some pretty significant checks in it. Um, however, if I run into a problem with those, hopefully I'll be able to stabilize them either with some wood glue or some CA glue. Uh, let's get started trying to make this into something. Thank you, Les. Quite an act of kindness and generosity. I really appreciate it. See if I can turn this into something worthy of your level of generosity. Thank you. Always remember to read, follow, and understand all the shop safety for any tool that you're going to be using. And most importantly, when you're using a lathe, wear a face shield. It's very important. Um, I have seen pieces come flying off. My own father was hit fairly hard in the middle of the forehead, causing two black eyes and a uh, good bleeder. So um, remember, wear your gear. Wear all your safety gear. It's very important. It'll keep you turning for a longer time. Thanks. Oh, and one other thing. I did have uh, somebody mention the fact that they didn't like to see me turning with my wedding band on. So I'm going to remove my wedding band while I turn. Alright, so I just uh, band sawed up a little chunk of this. And uh, this chunk is two and a quarter by almost two and a quarter and then it is just over three, three and an eighth yeah, three and a sixteenth so I've got a little two by three approximately chunk out of this, it's got some great looking grain and we'll see what I can make alright, so getting started here's the piece tailstock locked off quill lock down. Just going to give it a little spin. See how it looks. And that looks pretty pretty centered right there. I should be able to get a two inch piece out of this. Okay, I'm bringing up the speed here on this. A little more tension. Safety gear. And bringing up the speed to right around 1600. some real interesting grain in here. It's very splintery and extremely dry and powdery, so I'm trying not to get any tips here. Okay, almost into round. Getting some real interesting grain patterns. tiny flat spot right there. Okay, increasing the speed. Right there. Okay. Just 
just got rid of all of the flat spot. So now I've got a little bit of tear out here, uh, some on both ends of this where the wood is still just rough. It's actually not really tear out, it's um, just where I had roughed everything in. So that one there might be a little tear out. These are just the edge of the burned bark. Looks like this piece had been through a fire or something at some point. Okay. That looks good. Take my diamond parting tool. something similar up here but I'll do that once it's in the chuck jaws so now I'm going to start shaping the top of this canister using my 3 8 detail spindle gouge to create a little shape on the top edge of this canister. Alright, and now I'm using my narrow parting tool to create a sharp edge. softening on that outer edge and that'll be good. 
And in here with my narrow parting tool, uh, starting the lid right about here. Alright, I'm using a combination of my narrow and regular diamond point parting tool to create the tenon for this lid. Forzner bit, which is a uh, 1 and 5 8 inch Forzner bit, mounted up. I'm just going to make sure it wants to stay centered. This is a little smaller than the hole that I'll be wanting to drill. So now that I have it touching, I'll set my uh, set my cursor here on the on the quill at one. Loosely tighten down my quill, and everything's locked off. Start my drilling process. Down around 490. I'm even going to turn it down to 450. stabilize that right now with a little bit of CA glue. Alright, so I just put some CA glue and a little bit of zip kicker on this piece and then pressurized it with my tailstock. And it should now be stabilized there. Um, what I am going to do though, I think, is I'm going to put a little bit on this entire piece because um, seems like it needs it. Turning down around 140 RPM and just putting a little bit of the CA glue on there. Okay, the best thing to do is, while this is kicking off, just get away from it. It puts off some really funky gas. Okay. Alright, I'll let that cure up, then I will sand all that off. Uh, that's just to kind of hopefully get in there and stabilize some of the pores of this particular wood. I just put a little tiny bit more CA glue on there and then I will sand it down. Alright, now I'm just going to do some hollowing in here. Yeah. My square nose scraper, nice sharp edge on it. Okay, bringing up the speed, and before I do that, what I want to do is take and set my caliper to my lid size because normally, normally I will leave a little shadow there from my tenon showing me where I was going to, but on this particular one I didn't do that. I was trying to not take very much away, so. I'm taking away a little bit at a time until I get a really nice tight fit. Now I'm doing some sanding and a little refitting. 
And now All right, so we're almost there. Um, I had to do a little more CA glue fortification here because uh, I was having some issues with that same piece sort of splitting out a little bit here. Now I'm going to see if I can sand it and get rid of the little CA edge. And then same thing in here. All right, I'm sanding away and doing a little bit of square nose scraping in order to get a real nice fit on my lid. Now I've achieved that fit and just sanding the rough edges. Now I'm squaring up the whole canister and the bottom. Then I will come back and use my round nose scraper. There we go. And you can see down in there now. So I'm just removing that dimple. bit of sanding and uh, then I switch over from sanding to some sanding sealer after 400 grit if I had some 600 grit I would have used that but I didn't have any so I just continue to do some wet sanding with 400 grit it's a little worn down and now some finish all right so now you can see just how incredible the grain on this piece is. Zoom in a little bit more here. Try to focus up a hair. There we go. I think I've got it. Right there. So yeah, anyway, some real nice grain. And uh, thank you, Les. Uh, all I'm going to do now is part this off and put a little finish on the bottom, hand sand it. I've got to finish the inside as well. So, uh, but other than that, what I'll do is post some photos of this once I pull it off the, off the lathe. Thanks again to Les for sending this to me all the way from Australia. This hairy oak is truly uh, an amazing wood to work with. A little splintery and um, fragile. But uh, really comes out looking nice. The grain is spectacular. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, as the grain is spinning, it appears to almost be alive. It sort of moves around. These little worms of color uh, move around on this piece. It is pretty incredible. Uh, anyway, I just finished the inside. I'm getting ready to part it off. I'm going to do one more little buff out here. But uh, hopefully you can see that. They're just kind of moving around on there. It's really, really strange. Very trippy looking. Okay, I'm going to part this off of here now. Everything's locked down. Uh, looks like actually before I do that, uh, just a little bit higher than I'd like to be. There we go. Now, I'm going to come in here at a little bit of an angle. And then come in here. 
right up next to my truck. Okay, come back out here. All right, a little bit of sanding. I'm almost down, finished, so do a little bit of sanding, and while I have a chance, apply a little finish to that outside edge and recoat and rebuff the whole thing. Okay, finishing the parting off now, and hopefully we'll be able to see some of this. I'm going to finish it off just because this stuff is so um, potential, has such a strong potential for splitting and what have you. I'm going to uh, finish this off here just with my pull saw. You know what, before I do that though, I'm seeing a little bit of a doming on the bottom here so let me try to get rid of that first and in doming I mean that the bottom may not sit flat take the gear okay I think I got it with that so now backing the tool rest off in with my pull saw and just delicately cutting that piece off and there we go so yeah just a little bit of sanding on the bottom of this and then this piece is finished sanding and a little I'll put a little finish down there as well and buff it in but uh, wow beautiful piece of wood Thanks again, Les. Really appreciate it. From uh, Oakland to Australia, thanks a lot. Just wanted to real quickly show you how beautiful the bottom turned out as well. Really nice grain. Oops, got some dust on it. Anyway, finished product. Thanks for watching.